This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to prepare you for writing the Excel 2016 core exam by walking you through the practice tasks for Objective 5.1, Create Charts, Part 2. Let's get started. All right. Uh, the next thing we need to do is go on to our Fall Sales Worksheet. Now, I'm going to warn you, I hope you have a strong stomach because uh, what you see here it may shock you. Um, all right, here we go. All right, all right. Hopefully, everyone's who's watching this is still okay. Um, here is our fall sales, and uh, here is an absolutely horrible chart. Um, and, and there is a whole lot wrong with this that, that we'll fix at the end of the video. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to, or I guess fortunately for you, I'll, I'll work through the steps that they've asked uh, before we make those changes. But uh, please don't ever make a chart like this. Uh, if, if, an, if, if a coworker or an employee brought this to me, uh, I wouldn't go so far as to say I would dismiss them, but uh, we'd probably sit down and have a, a chat talking about uh, effective chart design. Uh, so this, this violates all sorts of uh, best practices. And uh, anyways, uh, let's go on here before I rant any longer. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is switch the rows and columns of the chart. Okay, so what they... they What's happening here is what's being plotted here is different than what the user would really like. Um, and so, for example, down here it says October, and uh, here are all the different categories. So let's, up in the chart tools here, uh, let me make that visible for you. I'll put that at the bottom. All right. So up here in chart tools, in this contextual menu, we'll go to design and Right there for us is a switch row and column box. So if I click that, that automatically switches us. So now at the bottom, this is our category names. And over here, October is showing our, uh, our data legend. So that's the first thing we need to do. Already, this is a little bit better just without having so many colors. All right, next we want to change the October sales amount for the flowers category to a new number. So because the data is linked from this chart into this table, if I make a, ch a change here, so I've selected cell B10, which is the October value for flowers, and I'm going to change it to 888 and 25 cents. And when I hit enter here, you're going to notice this, uh, the size of this column change here. So I'll hit enter, and sure enough, it is now dropped down below that thousand line. Um, next, what we want to do is expand the data range plotted by the chart to include November so that we can see sales for the two months. All right, so there's a few ways that we can go about this. Um, one thing we can do is if we have the chart selected, we can right click on it and go to select data is one way that we can do this. Uh, another way is if we go into chart tools uh, on our menu, our ribbon, we can go to the same option here, select data. So there's a few ways to do it. Uh, now, what we want to do is we would like a new series added to this. So what we are going to do is go to add. And our series name is going to be November. So I'm just going to click on the cell. Now, I could have just typed that in here if I wanted to. Uh, by clicking this arrow, though, I can use my mouse to highlight it. So for series values, uh, I'm going to select all of these numbers here. Okay, so now we have that. You can actually see in the background here that, okay, it looks like I've done that right. It, it's all showing up right next to it. So I can click OK. Um, this horizontal category access label, so those are our categories. Uh, right now, it, it defaults with just these numbers. So I'm going to hit Edit and select the range of these numbers here. Now, it wasn't causing a problem before, but uh, now I know that it's right. Whichever, whichever one of these I select uh, are going to uh, have the same list of titles here. So once I click that, I now have this uh, chart, which is showing me two months instead of one in this uh, absolutely horrible format. Uh, but I believe that's what the example file shows you. Uh, we've worked through the three steps. Now, uh, if if you'd be so interested, I'm, I'll work through and I'll turn this from a horrible chart into at least a, uh, uh, if I flatter myself, a semi-decent one. 
So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is change the chart type. Um, so this is a 3D uh, a column chart. And any option that says 3D in Excel's charts, uh, don't choose it, it is the, the, the simplest thing I'm going to give you. So let's go up here in Chart Tools, and we're going to go to Change tar Chart Type. And once I've selected that, I get this new dialog box, which shows all these different uh, options. And instead of a 3D clustered column, I'm going to just go to a normal clustered column. In my opinion, just by doing that, we've already uh, improved this chart a material amount uh, right from the get-go. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this number axis. Um, you know I don't like the decimal points, so I'll go, I'll double click that, select my number option, and go to zero on the decimal places. So now those are gone. Uh, I'm going to go even farther though. Uh, so in my display units, I'm going to go to hundreds. Okay, and then I'm actually going to uncheck this display units label on the chart. So and when I do that, this hundreds num is going to disappear. All right, so that's gone now too. We'll close that. We'll see how it looks. All right, so again, we're getting better. There's much less wasted space here on the side than there was before. However, over on this side, there is, there's a fair amount of space that, that, in my opinion, isn't being used effectively. So I'm going to take this legend, and I'm just going to drag it into the chart area. Now that's I'm not going to leave it there all the time. After I've done that, I'm now going to expand my chart area. Uh, maybe not quite that far. And I'm going to make a little room at the top for a title. And we'll adjust this. Now, one other thing, at least for me personally, we don't need these many grid lines. Uh, I've seen some authors uh, who, who say, hey, you don't need any of them at all. And, and I'm not maybe quite that draconian about them. But uh, in my opinion, I would only use uh, no more than three. And the other thing as I do is I usually get rid of the one on top. And, and I'll show you how we can do this here by manipulating our axis. So in order to do that, I need to divide it into four. And, and with 25, that's not a real simple thing to do. You get a few awkward numbers. Uh, so what we can do is after I've double clicked that, I can tell Excel how big I want this, how, how tall I want this legend. So I want it to start at zero still, okay? But my maximum, I want to change to 2,400, okay? Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my units to 600. And by doing that, there's gonna be fewer in the worksheet. So now we've gone from several lines to just three of them. Uh, next, what I would do is, uh, I would actually, I don't want to have one at the top. I just like having some free space up there. And, and so I force Excel to do that by, instead of having 2,400 up there, I go to 2,399. And once I've done that, that line drops off the top. Uh, but it, otherwise, it hasn't changed uh, my chart at all for me. All right, so now looking at this, this is a little bit simpler. We have fewer columns. What I really need to know here is, in my opinion, is the relative height of them. I don't think anyone is going to get out a ruler and, and move it across to the legend and, uh, and and try and figure out what the sales numbers were. So this way they can say, okay, well, here's 1800 a month. And oh, oh, wow, there's only a few categories that are bigger than that. That's, that's really what I want to draw attention to. Uh, now, this uh, lovely green color, what we can do is go to, by double clicking on that area, we can go to fill and we can go to no fill. Now, I don't necessarily want no fill and show all the grid lines. So I'll select solid fill and then change my color to white. All right, so now that that's done, now there's this lovely green border. So let's go to no line for the border. I'm also gonna do the same thing for this axis. Uh, I'm going to put no line for that axis. All right, so now, again, we've we've cleaned this chart up quite significantly. Uh, let's add a title here. So we can go to design. Um, we'll add a chart element. Go to chart table, chart title, and we will go above chart, and we would do call this uh, monthly sales. 
and I would do something like dollars a uh, hundred. All right, now that's a little bold, so I'm going to make this part of it by highlighting it. I will make this uh, even eight point is plenty. All right, so in, in just a few minutes, we've taken that chart from, from what was pretty horrible to something that's now tolerable. Um, I'm going to actually get rid of the fill here as well and take that to no fill. So now we have a nice clean uh, chart that attention is being drawn to the aspects that are the most. Now, we'd probably want to change the rotation of the text here too, because otherwise what happens is your users will start to crane their necks to the side and so that they can read what's in there properly. Um, with all that empty space, I can actually now increase this over my title. Uh, so now I've maximized the informative part of my my chart. If someone sees this, it hopefully is going to be very clear to them uh, what exactly uh, I'm trying to draw attention to. Uh, I'll show you a couple other things we can do here just so you know that they're there. Um, by double clicking on one of these series, one of these columns, it's popped up the series option. One thing I'll point out to you is series overlap. So right now, the this two series are exactly next to each other. There's no overlap. By going to a higher number here, they're going to become more and more overlapped. So if I go all the way to 100%, these are now perfectly overlapped. And uh, I show you that because if you get creative, there's actually a few tricks that, that you can do. Uh, to make some interesting charts later on by playing with these overlaps. Um, we can also separate them out. So now they're spaced exactly one column width apart from each other. Uh, in this case, because I'm trying to compare months, I, I probably wouldn't do that. Uh, I, I think having them uh, touching is probably about the right uh, amount. So I'll just hit zero for that. The next is gap width. And so this is controlling how much room is between one uh, category of columns and the next. So this white space kind of right there. Uh, and so by selecting this, uh, if I go to zero, they're all going to be touching. Okay, if I go to 100, there's now going to be exactly one column width in between the two categories. Same thing if I go to 200, it's going to make these skinnier and increase the gap. Uh, and, and so depending on, again, how you want to communicate the information, uh, you may find some of those settings are more valuable to you uh, and, and can help make your charts more impactful. Thanks for watching. This is Craig with Karshalton Advisory. We'll see you on the video for Objective 5.2. Thanks for watching.